What's going on everybody, Lauren with the TMF Podcast, and I'm going to do an update video to AMC Stock. I have not traded AMC Stock in a while. I do watch it from time to time when it does something crazy. I did say in previous videos, maybe a few weeks or even as, maybe as much as two months ago, when I when I really got out of AMC, and that was after it really had the sell-off from 70, and it, and it came way back down. And I said, AMC, um, I kind of believe after watching a lot of the YouTubers out there doing my own kind of due diligence on the stock and what everyone thought was going to happen. And those videos did not get much love. Let's be honest. They did not. And if you want to show me some love, you can like this video, hit the like button. Um, and, and we'll, we can come back and talk more about it. But if you go back and watch those, um, I, I saw a shift in what was happening with AMC. A shift not only in what people were saying, but I paid attention to what the main pushers of YouTube were saying. These are the guys that really drove this stock. The Trey's Trades, the uh, Mo Moneys, the freaking, uh, who's the other dude that really pushed it? Exactly. Um, the Matt Coors. These guys got mainstream media attention. However, I argued that they didn't really care if it went up or down. They're going to hold it until it squeezes to whenever. But they also make a ton of money off YouTube. So what does it matter? You apes are the ones that matter. The, the me's and you's, the guys who have two shares, 200 shares of AMC stock, and you're hoping for the best outcome. So let's talk about what's happening with it right now. This is AMC as of today. It is at 41.98. It's 4.30 p.m. July 12th. How is AMC at $42 when all of the apes aren't selling? Nobody's selling, you say. We're going to hodl it. They have to cover. We're going to go over an article here that I found uh, to be quite <coughs> interesting. It showed up today, and this is a website that, believe me, people are going to go, oh my God, I can't believe you. It means nothing. It's stupid, blah, blah, bud, yada, yada, yada. It's from The Motley Fool. And I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to put it on the screen and I will, uh, I could put a link to it if we want to do all that. You want to read it yourself, but eight lies that have fueled the AMC entertainment pump and dump. The reason this is important is because these are key points, right? These are, these are valid. This is not someone making this up. When you read it, it is very much a valid point. Um, the number one is hedge fund short selling bankrupts companies. It does not bankrupt them. Hedge fund short selling companies is basically them just placing an educated bet. It's no different than me buying puts, basically. I, I think the stock's going to go down. The company's going to go down. By them short selling the company, it has no direct implication as to the performance of that company. Right? If someone pulls out a, a massive short position on a company such as AMC, it actually affects them. It takes no money out of AMC's bank account, no money out of their operating costs. They can still have sales and revenue. It does not decrease the potential in any way. What it does do is make them a ton of money if the company does not succeed. That is very true. If they do not succeed and they end up going down, then short selling makes them a ton of money. It's no different than you as an ape betting your $42 a share that it's going to go to $10,000 a share. The only difference is, is that you only lose if the stock goes down and you only lose a certain percentage. They could lose 100% over the long term on their short position. The number two lie is shorts have to cover. This was huge. This, this one is big because throughout the entire AMC Jamie thing, that was all of the hype. They have to cover. What's the short interest? How much did they borrow? What's the borrow rate? All of this is all that we focused on. And we learned throughout this, transparency is not there. The data that you're given is not accurate. It's days behind. Who even knows if the data that they get is accurate? Fintel, Ortex, all these things, right? So now you have a company who's giving you data, but you're just going off of what, oh, the short to borrow interest is 18%. Okay, cool. That's what it costs. They could just, that might not even be true either. Here's the cold hard facts. We don't know. We don't know what, how much they, how much they paid to do any of this. The number is made up. They don't have to cover. 
they can hold it, right? So here's what it says. Hedge fund assets under management jumped to $4 trillion in June 2021, according to Barclay Hedge. For short covering to be disorderly, a massive wave of margin calls would need to come into play. Since the vast majority of hedge funds are diversified and they have well over $4 trillion in assets in their sales, the chance of a margin call wave forcing short covering is virtually non-existent. We do see short squeezes in the stock market. We do. We see some of them cover. Usually it rockets up a smaller cap stock. AMC is going to take a massive cover, which they don't have to do. They do not have to do it at all. But they are saying that, you know, right here, specifically apes are implying that there is some level of urgency here and that the disorder from excessive covering will lead to the mother of all short squeezes. Now, this is important because I watched recently a little bit of Trey's Trades and maybe even Matt Kors, um, a clip from them and what, what they were saying. And people, you know, they honestly, most of their show is just them reading comments, resp responding to comments. Most of the comments are from people who have no idea of anything that has to do with the stock market, period. The majority of them, right? And the only terms that come up are short squeeze, short interest, cover, you know, they have to cover, blah, blah, blah. Those are the things. Here's the reality. If you ask these guys, what's it going to go? Oh, with the squeeze is coming. Okay. I'm going to go buy 145 strike calls. I'm assuming that's what they still go for. I, I honestly would have to look at the options chart here. AMC goes to 145. Okay. Still go there. I'm going to go load up on 145 strike calls. Is that a good idea? Well, what, what expiration? Uh, next week. They're going to say, that's a terrible idea. That's a lottery ticket. Okay. What about in August? That's a lottery ticket. Okay. What about in October? That's a lottery ticket. If 145 strikes is a lottery ticket, no matter when I buy it, you do not believe that the short squeeze is coming anytime soon. This came up a lot in the last few weeks, which is a big indicator that they don't believe that it's going to squeeze anytime soon. If it did, YOLO 145 calls every week. Because if you believe it's going to $500 or $1,000, let me tell you something. If you bought a 145 call right now, and at the end of the week, it was a freaking $150 or $200, of, of, even if it was $100 a share. Like, you're going up. You're, you're in the money. Why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you invest in that? You know why? Because they're smart and they know it's not going to happen. So, let's continue on. They don't have to cover. They just don't. Lie three. Short squeeze is coming around the corner. That's what I was just talking about. Doesn't have to happen at all. It's not around the corner. Let's see what they are here. Uh, we're going to just go down. Aside from an institutional investor hedge fund margin call wave being highly unlikely, history has also showed that the short squeeze candidates have a poor track record of success. Earlier this year, I looked at the trailing three-month returns of 114 stocks with short interest above 20% and a market cap of at least $300 million. Only 9 of 114 had gained 10% or more, while 94 of the 114 had a negative three-month return. Apes need fresh capital to keep pump and dump scheme going, but the data clearly shows that short squeezes rarely pay off. It's true. They do rarely pay off, but sometimes they do pay off. And we cannot presume that every stock that goes up more than 10% is a short squeeze. Oh, it went up this. Look, there's a stock today, and I did not buy into it. I will be, if uh, I did not. 311%. One day, MDIA, Mediaco Holding. 311% up. Short squeeze? Is that what that was? Is that a short squeeze? Is it an epic short squeeze? Is it what? No. They're not all short squeezes. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Line number four. Fundamentals don't matter. I argued this for a minute that, that they didn't matter. Because to an extent, people were just buying AMC based solely on the fact that they think it's going to squeeze and, and it's going up. They didn't care about anything, didn't know, didn't care about anything that's going on with AMC as a company. Just if I buy it and I hold it, it will go up. That is um, not necessarily true as we see as we are going down. But you do own enough of it to sustain a certain price level. And I talked about this maybe two months ago that I think AMC would bring the company valuation of up to meet the stock price eventually, but that also 
the stock price would come down to a happy medium where AMC could get there. Prior to it being at 50 bucks or even $40, its higher was in the 20s. And I thought, yeah, mid, mid to high 20s has probably come back down and hover there. And AMC can use some of the money, whether it's through um, selling shares, raising capital to have acquisitions to raise the company valuation to ma match the stock price. They don't have to do that. You know, when the stock goes up, AMC's bank account does not inflate. They get none of the money unless they sell some of their shares. Really is irrelevant whether AMC is $10 a share or $100 a share. AMC's financials are the same um, unless they raise money by selling equity. Uh, the next one here, hedge funds control the mainstream media. This one I'm on the fence about arguing with because you can't have somebody says I, on YouTube says this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. If you do what I do, you will lose money. Then you have someone on there like Jim Cramer who screams at the top of his lungs, buy, 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 buy. That definitely moves stock prices. He directly does that. Him and other people in mainstream media do that. And who has an invested interest in them? I don't know. We don't know. But do I think somebody on the outside of that is, is pushing an agenda? Sure. Does it happen to do completely with AMC? Probably not. Um, here we go. The findings here, five of 176 outlets are controlled or major majority controlled by private hedge funds. Apes simply hate hearing bad things said about AMC. They will go to any lengths necessary to obfuscate those facts, including lying about mainstream media. I am no fan of mainstream media. So I'm going to say that you probably shouldn't listen to whatever mainstream media is saying, period. And that's just kind of where we're at after the entire fake news debacle for years. I just, I'm on board. I don't really believe that. Um, line number six, you are obviously short. To build on the previous point, AMC's impassioned retail investors will also claim inherent ownership biases in the anchors, guests, authors, and so on, who rail against their stock. It's necessary to help recruit fresh capital for their cause by trying to create an us first them mentality. AMC is 100% us first them, period. To offer an example, I've personally been told on social media by dozens of times that I am obviously short or clearly losing a lot of money because of the journalistic position I've taken on AMC while I speak can't speak for any other company. I can proudly claim that my stock holdings are public information. They're updated daily if I make a move. And that is huge. You see in comments, oh, AMC's going down. If I say, if I go right now onto Weeble or onto YouTube and I say AMC is going to be at $39 tomorrow, I will be ridiculed to no end. You'll probably comment on this video and tell me I'm being paid by somebody, but I'm not. I'm barely paid by YouTube <laughs> to make a video, like barely. I'm going to make an equivalent of 10 cents an hour to post this video. Um, but people believe that any negative connotation to the stock is some kind of shill or some kind of hedge fund worker or you're, you're, you want it to go down. I don't care if it goes up or down. I don't give a shit if it goes up or down affects me none at the moment you know if it's going to go way up i would like a notification bell so i can buy some calls and if it's going to go down to ten dollars same i'll buy some puts right now i think it's going to trade sideways i think that is what is going to happen that was my thesis for a while and for the most part it's mostly traded sideways this is a little bit lower than it's been in a minute but i wouldn't be surprised to see amc at 52 dollars tomorrow or would I be surprised to see at $39? Both ways. All right, let's move on. We got two more to go. BlackRock and Vanguard buying AMC stock is bullish. Uh, not really. It's not really bullish. These companies own so many, so many things. Look, BlackRock had to close 5,000 positions with Vanguard, chiming in with more than 4,000 positions during Q1. BlackRock and Vanguard added more than 3,900 and 3,200 of these stakes, respectively. BlackRock and Vanguard have so many product offerings that they have stake in virtually every stock listed in an index. Saying that BlackRock and Vanguard buying AMC is bullish is akin to saying you bought shares of Ford stock because you like the red paint. That's very true. They are big companies. 
right? They're huge companies in the market, but they own a ton of everything. So the fact that they own AMC, not really that, that's such a small percentage of their portfolio. Now, if they said BlackRock or Vanguard went all in on it, different story. It's just not the way it is. Last but not least, Apes saved AMC. And this is interesting. And I'm going to read this one because this is their words. This is quoted from here, from The Motley Fool. The eighth and final mammoth lie that AMC's retail investors rely on to coerce community compliance and bring in fresh capital is the idea that Apes saved AMC. These folks genuinely believe that by purchasing shares of AMC, they somehow saved the company from going bankrupt. As I discussed with the first line on this list, buying and selling stock has absolutely no influence on how well or poorly a company performs from an operating standpoint. Even if Apes were to buy every share in existence, AMC could still go bankrupt if its operating performance doesn't improve. And based on its 2027 bonds trading, well below par, Bondholders aren't convinced that the things will improve enough to save the company. What really saves companies from bankruptcy is their operating performance and the actions of management. In AMC's case, selling hundreds of millions of shares of stock and issuing high interest debt last year and in early January gave it the financial lifeline needed to survive the worst of the pandemic. That's not apes saving AMC. That's the company's actions extending its lifeline. If anything, apes are purposely harming AMC by trying the hands of CEO Adam Aaron and shooting down any additional opportunities for the company to raise capital and shore up its balance sheet. If the list of lies shows anything, it's the lengths Ape will go to manipulate AMC's share price. However, history is very clear that all pump and dump schemes end in disaster. That's not Bud. It's a practical guarantee. So what they're saying here in layman's terms is that you could have taken AMC stock from $4 to $100. If you don't allow AMC to sell shares and raise capital, it doesn't help them at all. Right, AMC's bottom line is the same whether the stock is at four dollars or four hundred dollars. That is a fact, it's no different than you. And I argue this when you buy stock on your app on your phone, you don't really own anything, you don't get a you don't have a copy of it, you don't have it in your hand, right? You just don't. You're just trading a, a, a it, it, I don't even know how to explain it. That may even make sense to me. You're taking your virtual money and you're turning it into something else that's virtual and then you're selling it without ever even owning it at all. You've never held it. You virtually have it. And it, it's interesting to think that you've saved them because you have it now. Did they raise capital because the stock went up? Yes, they did. They definitely sold some stock at a higher price than it was in December and January. Um, if they, if Adam Aaron came out and said, tomorrow, I want to sell another 5 million shares of AMC at market, you would lose your shit. But they need the money so they can do more things. But you would go crazy because the stock's going to fall. The stock's going to fall. You want the stock to go up. In order for the stock to go up, you got to keep buying it. Keep buying it or just buying it, buying it what by the ask. Eventually, people are going to look around and they're going to go, I made a little bit of money or I've lost a little bit of money because they bought in late and they think it's going up. And they're going to want to get in on something like that right there. Okay. They're going to want a piece of this puzzle. I'm trying to short up here. Because I see that it's like not on my screen correctly. For some reason, Weeble just doesn't want to fit on here. All right, there we go. How about that? They're going to want a piece of this right here. 311% gain in one day. And I'm, look, man, I'm all for the transparency movement. I'm all for the, but we're not going to win this battle. We're not going to win it based on just buying and holding AMC stock. We're not. You're not going to win. You need to do something more than that. You're fighting a, a machine that is, is far, far, far superior than you. This is just facts. It's not FUD. If you want to hold AMC until it's worth a uh, dollar or a thousand dollars, that is a thousand percent your priority, your prerogative. You can do that. I'm not telling you not to. 
But I know that there's people out there going, why did I just lose 8% of my money? Why isn't it going up? I bought calls and I lost. Why? Everyone's telling me to hold. This is good news. Let me tell you what's not good news. That's not good news. You know what that is? That is a bearish pattern. That is bearish as it gets. This is a one hour chart. Look at the daily chart. You know what they're going to do? They're going to take this chart and they're going to add some gigantic spike to it because it's happened once before. Look at what happened in history. This isn't history, bro. This is the real world. This is the real world where this entire pattern is a downward pattern. You're going to build the biggest bull flag in the Wall Street history. In order for you to think this is going up. It's not going up, bro. It's not. Your best hope right now for AMC, real talk, is that it finds and creates a new level of support to which the stock is valued at. That your people are comfortable at buying and trading it at. That's where we're at. I don't want to discourage people. I want people to go out there and make money. I want them to take profits that they made off of AMC and generate more money and live a better life for themselves. I don't want to read comments of people who are planning to pay off their house, their mortgage, their student loans, their mom's medical bills, start a freaking business, retire at 24, because they honestly believe that their three shares of AMC are going to be worth $100,000 a share. I want you to come to reality. The most expensive stock on the stock market is Berkshire Hathaway. Right here. You want AMC to be Berkshire Hathaway. $420,000 a share. Damn near four twenty one. dollars Do you think AMC is worth this? And that somehow it will short squeeze into this. And that's madness. It's madness. If you want $100,000 a share, well, you better start trading. You better start getting rid of some AMC and putting it into something that's going to make you some money. Because that bear, that bear is going to come eat. So, I'm sure this video will get lots of dislikes. I appreciate anyone who watched it to the end. Leave me some comments on it. You can be as mad as you want. I'm all for it. Till next time, man, check out some of the other, other clips on there. I do live stream some stocks. Um, I'm trying to be a little bit more fiscally responsible with my investments. And, uh, you know, join the cause. And also check out the other podcast, the Free As Fuck podcast. It's a good listen. So, catch you guys later. Good luck, apes.